And our market that's suddenly gotten a lot more upbeat. What do we do with the safety stocks, like the real estate investment trust? Take Ventas, a well-run healthcare REIT that owns senior housing facilities, medical office buildings, hospitals, and research labs across North America and the UK. That's a nice, consistent business, and the stock also protects you with a juicy 5% yield. Plus, we know Ventas is doing well because the company reported a strong quarter just last week. However, as we saw today, this is not the kind of stock people get more excited about as the global economy improves. On the other hand, if you're skeptical about President Trump's ability or his willingness to strike a deal with the Chinese. Well, then the REITs could come roaring back the moment one of the hardliners in the administration leaks something negative about the negotiations. That's been going on forever, right? Think of Ventas' insurance against the possibility of anything that might cause a further economic slowdown. Now, last night, we got a chance to speak with Deb Kafaro, the terrific chairman and CEO of Ventas, and I thought she told a compelling story. So take a look. Deb, Ventas has done amazingly, and yet I know you've been worried about the growth. You're talking about a pivot year back to growth right now. How can it happen? Oh, there are four building blocks for Ventas' pivot back to growth. Senior housing is going to have a powerful upside and add to our other asset growth that Mm -hmm. we have had all along. We're going to use our balance sheet strength. We're going to go back to being an external growth machine. And those are really three of the key areas. But how do we know? I mean, look, I I know your private pay, and that's the best. Mm -hmm. But how do you know a lot of these, you know, the federal government doesn't stop? Let's say they cut back on -hmm. on helping the non-private pay, and maybe the states cut back. Aren't a lot of the other guys going to go out of business? Well, we are private pay, and and obviously we have the big new research and innovation business. Right. That's the fourth building block that of our. But I just worry that the growth. ones that aren't good like you could drag you down. In the private pay business. No, we're not in the public. Right. Well, our business is principally private pay, as what we've talked about. What happens if they go bankrupt those people and then they send it back into private? Or is that not the way it works? That that's not the way okay. it's going to work. Okay. I mean, good. if you if you look at the private pay businesses that we're in. They are thriving. When you look at senior housing, for example, the, the average net worth of an over 80 is over a million dollars. Really? Yes, it is. Wow. And so when you look at Ooh. our average move-in age and you look at the average length of stay and the cost in the senior living community, there's very significant net worth and resources for seniors, even without the support of their children, to live comfortably okay. and happily in I our senior know that. living I didn't know that much. I do know that your yes. demographic figures, the, what, the fastest cohort in the country is the 75 to 81? It is. It's growing. It's, it's unbelievable. Is it's it growing it? 4% a year for each of the next five years. And even the 82 to 86 will start growing 3% a year starting in 2020. So we have great demographic demand. Okay, uh, there's a fight going on in New York right now over what I think may be one of the greatest things ever for research, uh, which is the Amazon headquarters. Mm -hmm. Could you tell people the kind of compound growth you can get in that industry that you're investing in? Yes, well, we are doing a very particular kind of research and innovation business. We're doing it with the leading universities in the United States where they are developing cures for illnesses and chronic conditions, and it's very exciting, groundbreaking work that's being done in our buildings. And the uh, growth has been incredible. A couple billion dollars have been added to NIH funding. There's a tremendous amount of private money being invested in these critical cures, and the universities are really leading the way. And so that's been an exciting business for us. We have a billion and a half pipeline that we're adding uh, in development to that business. And the universities are really gung-ho about the, this research business. And how about the, the medical office building? Okay. The medical office building is steady, Eddie. Okay. That's, well, that's really fine. how you should think about it. Again, it's demographically driven. People over 65 go to the doctor at least 10 times a year. Outpatient businesses are increasing because they're a lower cost setting. And we are one of the leading owners of that business. So there you should be looking for steady 
inflationary-like increases every year in net operating income. Now, do we have to worry? I mean, for instance, uh, here's an alpha BMO says, Ventos provided underwhelming 2019 guidance. They're worried about your compound rate. This is what I keep, you know, I'm just afraid that they will overbuild again. I, you know, this is, all this is about the glut that you told us would be worked off. And just, I am concerned because people say, Jim, you love this Ventos. Don't you see they're building all these places that it could just all come back to haunt them? Well, thank you so much. And we have talked about this before. Right. And I want to be really clear about what's happening. And that is that starts in senior living have continued to decline and therefore improve the most ever in the fourth quarter. So we're at the really? lowest level since 2012 in starts. But as we've talked about before, right. we are working our way through the starts that began a couple years ago right. in anticipation of the demographic demand. Mm -hmm. And we continue to have to work our way through those starts. But there is a powerful upside as we see the growth in seniors coupled with this improvement in starts, which continues to tick downward, which is in our favor. Okay, are you seeing opportunities to buy? You've refinanced that balance sheet so you can grow. We do, we do have a great balance sheet. That's one of our good characteristics, and that's an asset for us, as we may want to turn on the acquisition machine. Right. And uh, we do see opportunities for external growth, and that's one of the ways of the pivot year back to growth for Ventus. So you are using the term you were saying, is there's a powerful cyclical upside yes. coming. So yes. people should stay in, which, you know, I support you endlessly because it's been so great during the downturn. I can't wait to see what it'll be like during the upturn. Well, thank you. We have 23% compound annual return. We have a 5% dividend yield, great balance sheet, great demand-driven business. And you have not been wrong sticking I with know us. I I haven't because so we'll I backed you the every, whole way. We will do everything we right. can to keep that track record And you came going. on during the short sellers who were after you, and they were wrong, and that's why I had to ask about all these, well, how about if these yes. other guys go out of business? Because yes. that's the new deal. They always come up with something, and they're yes. always wrong, Deb, and you've been right consistently. Well, we'll keep at it. Okay, thank, thank you, thank you so, so much for coming Deb. on the show. That's De Deborah Kafar. And De Deb, this, this Ventas, you know I have a VTR. I've liked it the whole way. She's the CEO, and I, I want to double down on it after what she just said. Man, money's back in. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.